from the interruption of service today, we certainly know how inconvenient that is for our customers. Um, at this time, we are just over 80% restored. And in terms of the, the outage, uh, it occurred around 11.30 this morning um, with, with, as you indicated, a fault on one of our transmission lanes, specifically one between St. Thomas substation and the Spring Garden generating station. Um, when, when that fault occurred, we would have had uh, an uh, adjacent transmission lines also impacted and tripping off. And we're in the process of, of investigating that. We were able to identify the fault fairly quickly and isolate it. Um, what we are investigating now is why a fault on a single transmission line between those two stations would have caused the cascading event. Um, we were very quickly able to isolate and commence restoration. Restoration, in fact, started within about an hour. Uh, however, uh, the process of restoration was, was impeded somewhat by some instability issues that we encountered as we were restoring load uh, onto the system. Uh, we saw quite, quite a bit of instability at points. That would have resulted in some customers seeing the power back and, off, and, and then back off and on again. Um, and it is something that we we're investigating as well. We, we suspect it is related to the amount of uh, renewable energy that we have, intermittent renewable energy that we have, that does create some challenges in terms of balancing the network. And certainly at that time of the day, around midday is when those systems are at maximum. And so that created some challenges for us in, in restoring. Um, and so th that, that would have taken a bit of time to work through. We had to stop at various stages to allow the systems to stabilize while we restored feeders in a systematic way um, coming up. One, one of the, we, we also did have an impact on one of our generating stations during that level of instability. Um, our sewer generating station experienced a, a challenge, um, which we have been able to resolve. We have one of those units back in service, um, and the others are in the process of being um, started up. So we expect that within the hour we should be at full restoration. But that really is a, a, a full rundown of what we, we, we experienced today. And we are in the process, as I indicated, of investigating uh, both the initial fault and why that led to cascading, as well as the instability issues that we experienced when we were um, going through the restoration. The last uncomfortable period of time when we had this island while shouting, the assurance was given that this would likely not happen again. So what do you say to people who say, oh my goodness, there it happened again? Yeah, well, we, we, we work very hard to avoid these types of, of, of incidents. Um, we, the last occurrence, we would have completed our investigation. We would have um, completed most, if not all, of the outstanding actions that we had identified. Uh, on that occasion, I have to, to say, we, we, we had a similar contribution uh, on that occasion um, from the conclusion of our investigation is that the renewable energy penetration that we have on the network complicated um, the, the system at the time of that particular fall and was certainly a, a contributing factor. And so this is something that we, we, we are, as an island, doing extremely well in terms of our transition to renewable energy. We're probably the top five in the world for solar PV uh, penetration. Uh, so there's been a lot of success in that regard. With that success comes some technical challenges that we need to work through. Um, and that is something that certainly is receiving a lot of attention at the moment. Um, and certainly as we go through this investigation over the next few days, we'll be able to provide some more updates and some feedback on what those additional things that we're doing to avoid these types of occurrences in the future. Naturally, people are also discussing the whole question of compensation. What can you say about that at this time? Well, the, the, from a compensation stand, standpoint, um, it, persons can contact the company with any challenges or issues that they've encountered, as, as is always the case. Um, and we, we have service standards that are set by the regulator that we will monitor and determine where we fell within those service standards. Um, and we will follow what have the, you know, the regulations and service standards rules that are in place. You mentioned 80% restoration, 20% naturally still outstanding. Uh, perhaps you can give us a sense of those areas which are still without power at this time and the expectation for them of when that power can be restored? 
Well, let me start with the, with the latter half. I expect that within the next hour or so, it should be at 100%. Um, having, uh, like I mentioned earlier, addressed the outstanding, the last issue that we encountered at, at the Seagull substation. In terms of the specific areas that are still out, um, we may need to follow up after maybe with a social media post that can get Jackie to just check that specific information and share, share that um, subsequently. So, Mrs. Marshall Clark, we can check your social media. Could you give us a sense of what those are so that everyone watching tonight can know where to go to be updated as it unfolds? You certainly can follow us on our Facebook page. You can check our Instagram page. You can check our website. Um, but we will certainly will put the updates there for you, let you know what are the areas still without power and what time they would be expected to be on again. It's good to know that the Barbados Land and Power top brass are still on the job. We see you're still there in your office. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, for assuring us that most of us still have power and that power will be restored very shortly to all across the island. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much, Pearson.